Hi everyone, my name is Audrey and welcome to my channel. in the back seat driving to you on the back streets all the other ones are asking but i don't give a fuck they nasty i'm just trying to find you because i don't got no ties we're running out of time so i'll be home tonight When push comes to shove, girl, just trust I won't get sick of us. You my salty crush. Uh, I'm doing something different. Your name's been on my tongue. My cup's been looking fuller. You're picking by my walls. And baby, let's settle up. Cause lately the world's been going crazy. And I go need somebody to talk. Saltine and ginger ale. That shit will never fail I keep it tough on my body Cause I don't feel well Girl, tell me something else Saltine and ginger fell That shit will never fail And you may think that I know too much But now it's never too much Because I'm pushed Comes to 
know it's never too much Because when push comes to shove Girl, just trust I won't get sick of us Oh, hold up, Shima Come for queen, my squeeze a night Who opens up this package is too tight Oh, whoa, uh, and know you got it like that Bring it on back, cause you got it like that Ah, oh, yeah, and know she got it like that Sometimes it's that's her best friend last Oh, your daddy gonna beat my ass yeah. So today I'm going to give you my June wrap up. If you want to see my June TBR, it's available on my Patreon that I'm going to link down in the description below. So every month I give myself a goal with a number of books I want to read for that month. And my TBR usually have more books than I can read in a month, but I like to give myself some choice and some flexibility because I do read with my mood of the moment. So for June, I gave myself a, a very big goal, which was to read nine books in a month. And for those of you who did not see any of my prior videos on Patreon, that is a lot. That's a big number for me. I used to average around three to five books a month and I'm trying to get that number a little higher because there's just so many books I want to read and reading only four books a month is, well, I'm not gonna get them read, obviously. And nine books for a month where I'm rushing to get all of my report cards do with school and everything it's it's a lot but i am still quite happy with the reading i've done because even if i did have a busy chaotic month i still managed to read five books which is pretty good i'm pretty satisfied with that number so i'm going to talk to you about the five books i read this month and i go by category of TBR, so readathons, arcs, and other books. So every month I participate in the Buzzwordathon, which is hosted by Books and Lala. I'll link her announcement video in the description if you want to check that out. So how it works is that every month there is a buzzword and you just have to read as many books as you can that have that buzzword in the title of the book. So for the month of June, the buzzword was names or titles. I had a lot of books with names in them. Um, my TBR was intense, but unfortunately I didn't get to read many of them. The first book I'm going to talk about is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. I've read this book as an audiobook in my car. So for those of you who do not know, this book talks about mass incarceration in the United States and the famous war on drugs that have been going on for decades. So since I'm a French Canadian, I did not learn much about black history in the States at school. I do try to educate myself as much as possible now but it's not something I'm very knowledgeful um, at the moment. But with this book, I've learned a lot. This was a version, um, a 10 years later type of version. So there was 
a whole chapter dedicated like for 10 years after. So this book was written way before George Floyd and the Black Lives Matters movement and all that. It was a tough read for me. I stopped reading the book for some time and then I picked it up a little later because it was just hard for me to get through. Uh, these are very heavy topics and I just got too frustrated to just keep on going. Um, you have to be in the right mindset to read this and it made me see a lot of things that I didn't quite fully understand I believe with all this mass incarceration because I do hear that expression a lot but I don't think I fully understand the big scope of it and I really appreciated this read because I've learned so much with this book and I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to learn more about the subject. I think the research was, was very thorough and you don't need any PhD to understand the language. It was very well done and I did not give this book a rating because I didn't feel comfortable with reading this book, but I highly recommend it. The second book I read for the Buzzwordathon is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. So this book was not on my original June TBR. I didn't have it at all. I had a small book haul um, during the month because I have found these books secondhand for a very cheap price. And I did a roll of a dice to get to know which book I was going to choose next. And this was the book that I rolled. So I know this book was pretty popular when a couple of years ago on booktube, but for those of you who do not know what this is about, it follows Eliza who is a young teenage girl and she is a senior at high school and she's a very introvert. She is not a popular student and she keeps for herself. Her parents worry for her a lot, but she is very popular online as a, the anonymous writer for a webcomic that is read by billions of people online. And one day at school, her teacher assigned her to a new student to help him out throughout the school. And she discovers that he's a fan of her webcomic, but he does not know she's the writer and a relationship develops and this has a lot of mental health rep for depression and anxiety. Trigger warning for those subjects if it's something that triggers you and also some trigger warnings for suicide. I did not have a lot of expectation with this book. This is a of YA obviously. I don't have much negative things to say about this. I loved it so much. The format was very interesting because some part of the chapters are written as messaging between the characters. Um, some parts, some pages are drawings from her webcomic and all that mixed up all together. I think it was written beautifully and I thought the writing was genius. The way that everything just fit together one chapter after the other. And when I was thinking about this book, when I finished it, I was thinking to myself that it got me into a roller coaster of emotions. And that's what I loved about it. And then I realized that that was the point of the book because the main character suffers from social anxiety and other type of anxieties and depression. And that's mainly what you feel when you have mental health issues. And I think that was brilliant to make the reader feel in a certain way that a character like Eliza would feel. I do have to do a disclaimer though, because I am not an own voice for mental health representation, but I did, I do have experience with it as a witness. My husband does have some mental health issues and with ADHD and anxiety and I work with children that have anxiety issues as well. And what is described in this book really matches well what my husband tries to describe me with his anxiety. So in that sense, I think the arrest was very well done. I thought it was very sensitive and respectful and it really hit me hard. So this was an easy five stars.
So those were the two books for the Buzzwordathon. I also participated in the Whatever You Wantathon hosted by Maddie from Book Browsing Blog. I'll link her video in the description below as well. So for that readathon, there was like there were teams and some prompts and and there were points and stuff like that. So I was trying to read as much fantasy as possible because I was on the fantasy team. So yeah, the next two books were read for that readathon, but the two books I read for the buzzwordathon also counted for the whatever you want to if that makes any sense. So those two books are Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is a duology that is set in the Grishaverse. I won't talk to you about Crooked Kingdom because I don't want to spoil um, the book for you, but Six of Crows follows six main characters, six point of views, um, they are thieves from a gang and they are hired to do a magical impossible heist. So in this fantasy world, there is magic. There are some people that are enslaved and magic is not, is frowned upon for some countries and very valued for other countries. So yeah, we follow these six characters, try to pull this impossible magical Heist. Um, if you've seen the Shadow and Bone series on Netflix, this is set in the same universe and I believe there are some characters of Six of Crows in the Shadow and Bone series. I have not watched the series yet because I do want to read the books first and I didn't read them yet, but I will pretty soon. Hopefully. I really enjoyed this read, this duology. The writing in this is beautiful. The characters are amazing. They're, they're really flawed. If you're looking for characters that are flawed, that are morally gray, that's what you got in this book. I really appreciated the, appreciated the growth of the characters. I know that most people prefer the Six of Crow books to the Crooked Kingdom, but I preferred Crooked Kingdom because, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything, but um, I feel like the Six of Crows has a format that is very, I don't want to say basic, but it's kind of a recipe. So we have the beginning, the introduction of the characters, and then the, they get hired, and then they get together, they plan, they do the heist, and then there's the ending. So we kind of know what to expect story-wise and plot-wise. Um, even if there are some twists and turns throughout the plot. But in Crooked Kingdom, it wasn't that clean cut, which I really appreciated. The stakes are really high in both of the books, and especially in the second book, you feel like they've hit rock bottom, totally. And I didn't know how they were going to get out of their situation and the growth in Crooked Kingdom was, in my taste, in my opinion, it was way better than in Six of Crows, but I still gave both of those books five stars. And the final book I read for the month of June was Hood Feminism by Mika Kendall. So this is a nonfiction that I've read through audio and it talks about feminism, but adds the racism aspect through feminism, how black women and women of color are even more marginalized than white women and all those aspects and I thought it was and I really appreciated the discussion because there's a lot of things that I just didn't realize was happening. I don't pretend like I know a lot about feminism. I try to do my best every day and I try to educate myself so well that's why I read this book but yeah there's a lot of things that I didn't realize were happening and it was very eye-opening for me. I really appreciated this book and I highly recommend it for the same reasons than for um, The New Jim Crow. I'm not going to be giving this book any rating because I don't feel comfortable with giving that type of book a rating, but I still strongly recommend this one.
So those were the books I've read in June. I hope you enjoyed this wrap up and let me know if you've read any of these books and what books you did read for June. I am very happy with my reading this month. I think it was a great month. Five star reads. Um, which is pretty rare. If you want to help out my channel, I, I will leave the links to my Etsy shop, my Patreon and my coffee page in the description below. Hit the like button if you've liked this video. Hit subscribe if you want to continue to hang out and have more videos like this one and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified every time I upload and I will see you soon in another video. Bye! Thank you.